hello, I'm back finally at last. To cut a long story short, the new Vista laptop does not work with older webcams, had to buy a new webcam, had to wait till this long way to date to actually be able to use said webcam. Cut long story short, I'm back. Hello. Anyway, now as you may know, on the 29th of November, Jeff Gerstmann left GameSpot, or forced out, depending on which way you look at it. Supposedly, IDOS weren't very happy with his review of Kane and Lynch. They put some pressure on CNET because they had huge advertising space on on the site at the moment advertising Kane and Lynch, and they weren't happy with his poor score and poor review. That's how the story goes, essentially. Now, anyway, the internet was just atrociously bad during this period. Everybody, not only were they snide, it's an in a sense to GameSpot. Like loads of people cancelled their subscriptions. Loads of people left the site, those people posted comments and emails and videos there, which is fair enough. I mean, a lot of people were heavily disappointed by GameSpot and consequently CNET's action. In a sense, though, I find it hilarious how everybody is suddenly now questioning everybody, every site, every magazine's journalistic integrity. You're an idiot if you're doing that, quite frankly. Did you not actually ever put in your mind the fact that, take for instance, the official Xbox magazine, I wonder why it gives Halo 3 10 out of 10. I can't think about that. Could it be that it's sponsored by Microsoft? Could it be that it, the magazine is produced by Microsoft? Has heavy links to Microsoft? I wonder. I wonder why this website, which has an advertisement for Assassin's Creed, is giving it a 9.0. I wonder if that's at all linked to it at all. I wonder why this magazine keeps giving EA games 8 out of 10. Hmm, I wonder. Journalist in integrity is a good thing, is a good theory, but at the same time, people have to sell advertisements. Sites like IGN and GameSpot, they would not be here today were it not for the advertisers. You can have all the viewers, all the subscribers you want, but they are pocket change compared to what the subscribers, to what the advertisers pay for their space on the site. Unfortunately, it's a sorry state of affairs, but the world of games journalism is a kind of sordid place if you look deep enough. You have various problems like publishing houses just saying things like if you don't give our next game 7 out of 10 you're not going to review any of our games ever again. That's a very horrible thing to have to do. You know, a lot, Some of the scores and tend to be skewed a lot because of actions like this by various publishers. And unfortunately most magazines and websites they don't have the power or the guts to ever stand up to said publishing houses and ever say we're not going to give your game the score it, it, um, we think it deserves and it's a sorry state of affairs but it's a true one and unfortunately because of GameSpot having their laundry washed out in the air and their dirty laundry in the air whatever the hell that saying is and unfortunately the website has suffered a lot a lot of people now claim all their editors are now paid off CNET is an absolutely rubbish company who just pay for advertising, who just want advertisement and that, that sort of thing. And that may be true to a certain extent, but at the same time, the internet has opened up many um, doorways to have access to decent reviews. If you're one of the few people who are actually completely jaded by the entire process and now think every single site is bought by advertisement, the internet has a wonderful thing. It's called player reviews. Now most sites like GameSpot, like IGN, they offer a place where other people, the people, the gamers who buy the game and play it, they can actually review the game and say their opinion. And that has the same downfall as the magazine reviews, being that, first of all, it's object to fanboyism. So essentially, if you look at a review for, say, Legend of Zelda, you're going to see about 100 reviews saying it's the best game ever, Zelda is awesome, nothing else can beat it. But you kind of have to ignore those reviews and look for the proper proper reviews where people are objective about the game and saying this bit's rubbish, this bit's good, this bit's rubbish, this bit's okay, it looks very pretty, that sort of thing. Now the only other problem you have about reviews and the whole review process as a whole is it's completely subjective and opinionated. You take any movie reviewer, any music reviewer, any game reviewer all that they are giving is their opinion on the game. Now they can level their opinion against another game so they can compare Halo to Half-Life but at the same time, it's just what they think of the two series as a whole. It's what they think of that game they played, how it measures up to other games, which in a sense is a very flawed thing in the first place, being that how do you compare one game to another? How do you compare Need for Speed to Gran Turismo? You can't. It's, it's a weird 
dichotomy in a sense, and I think I completely agree with what um, Penny Arcade, for instance, have wrote a lot about games journalism, saying how it can be somewhat flawed. Now, I'm not blaming games journalism as a whole, because it is the one industry that I'm getting into. And in fact, I posted a link to my right um, to my GameSpot account where I host regular blogs and um, game reviews. And so, as a whole, the main problem with game reviews is that it's just the person who's reviewing it, it's their opinion. It's what they've played of the game and what they think of the game as a whole. It's not complete fact. You know, Zelda given 10 out of 10 by X reviewer, that doesn't mean that that game is the best game ever. It's just that that is the best game they've played and it's the game that they think is better than most other games. It's just opinion. It's when you start looking at all the people's opinions together as a whole that it actually makes sense. Uh, sites like Metacritic and Games Rankings, for instance. Now you go on there and you see that, oh, this, this magazine, this magazine, this magazine, this magazine is given Halo 10 out of 10, and it's correlating to it being ranked in the top 10 games of all time, then you suddenly could start realising that, of course, it might be true. Now, unfortunately, as a whole, I just think journalistic integrity still exists. You've just got to search for it.